welcome to Ambient Guitar Recording Techniques. This is the first of a two-part series that I'm doing on the panning features of Logic Pro. In particular, Logic Pro 10.3.0, which was released in January of 2017. With the addition of a true stereo panning option, there are some pretty cool panning features. So on this video, we're not gonna look at ambient guitar stuff per se. I just wanna look at the features of Logic Pro in terms of panning. On part two, we'll see how I apply it to an ambient guitar track. So let's get right to work. First of all, I'd like to play you my sample track here, just a little bit of it. It's just drums and a synth. Here we go. All right, pretty simple, right? And you'll note that I pushed the drums all the way into the left channel and the synthesizer all the way into the right. So if you're familiar with Logic, the default panning option that you may have come across is the balance feature. And uh, this has been around in Logic, I think as long as the software has been around. And basically it acts on a stereo channel, it acts just like the balance control on your stereo receiver. So let's check that out. All right, so it works really well. However, there's an issue. If I pan on a stereo track, which is what this is, if I pan all the way to the right, the drums drop out. If I pan all the way to the left, the synthesizer drops out. Now, that's cool, but maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I just want to shift the stereo field back and forth um, without losing the drums or the synthesizer. Now, to do that in prior versions of Logic, you would have to use a plugin called the Direction Mixer. And it works pretty well, and it does allow you to shift the stereo field. But it's kind of a pain because you've got to stick a plug in on any track that you want to have that capability. With Logic Pro 10.3, you can simply right click on the pan knob, and you'll see that the default value is balance, but you can switch it to stereo pan. Now, let's check this out. Okay, that's pretty cool. You heard, what you heard was the drums hanging out in the left channel with the synthesizer kind of moving over to join it on the left side. Let me just swing that around, swing this knob around a little bit more and you can hear what happens when I go the other way. So that's really, really nice. I don't lose any of my channels. I just kind of shift where the channels lie in the stereo image. One of the other great things also is that I can um, adjust the width of the stereo image. So you see, If you look at the green ring, you can actually change the amount, I guess you would say, of the green ring just by kind of mousing over it um, and kind of making adjustments. Let's check that out here. Isn't that great? You can create a very wide stereo field or you can, you know, however you had it mixed originally, or you can narrow that field down and kind of coalesce the two channels together. And in addition, you can place that field, however wide or narrow it is, um, in the right to left imaging of that, of the overall uh, sonic image. So that's really cool. And I am making and will continue to make great use of it um, as I'm recording and creating mixes. All right, so that's the balance and the stereo pan. The last option I'd like to look at has been around in Logic for quite a while. It's the binaural panning option. 
And so let me get everything set up here. I'm just going to pull everything uh, back to the middle in regards to the drums and the synthesizer. And there's still stereo, so check this out here. Okay, so you still have that stereo image, right? All right, so binaural panning is the third option. So let's, let me right click here and you'll see binaural pan. Now, you may not be familiar with binaural recording. And this is a, a type of recording where um, you actually have a head-shaped mic stand, if you will, and you put a matched pair of mics in the same place where your ears would be to record the audio. And the idea here is that you then get a stereo image that very closely approximates what your ears hear. It's actually pretty cool. You can approximate that in Logic with the binaural pan option. I'm gonna double click on the pan knob now. And what we'll see is because binaural panning is a little more complex, we actually get a, a dialog that pops up. Now, this is available on earlier versions of Logic. So this is not new for 10.3, but being able to access it from the pan knob, just like uh, stereo pan and balance is new. So it's really, it's really convenient now to get to. So let's take a quick look at that. This circle represents the stereo image of front, right, left, direct left, direct right, and then the lower hemisphere of the circle is the uh, image behind you. In addition to that, you've got the planar field, which is if you move the mouse, if you kind of click that dot there and move the mouse around, you can see this is the angle at which you're facing the audio. So you can adjust, you can adjust it, you know, every which way. So are you looking down, looking up? Um, it, does the image appear to be tilted to your ears? And then there's also a vertical offset. So are you above the image, kind of hearing below, I believe it is. And then there's an overall size, there's even Doppler effect. So it's quite quite extensive in its capabilities. So what I'd like to do now is uh, I'm going to start playing the track here and I'm just going to mess around with some of the pan options and I want you to listen to what happens. Now, the, the best way to listen to this is going to be with headphones, but if you're listening to uh, decent speakers, um, kind of move your head into the speaker so you can hear and really kind of get a sense of the stereo image. Here we go. Do you hear how flexible that is? Now, it it's really interesting. The, the tone is not as full sounding as the other panning options. And that is because, I believe, uh, this is my theory anyhow, that is because there is now some phase cancellation going on within the stereo imaging, which is really kind of what you hear when you're listening to audio in a room. There's always some... Uh, amount of phase cancellation going on, but it does create a more realistic sound. Let me uh, play around with the, uh, the, the tilt and the vertical offset, just so you can kind of hear that too. I really like this panning option a lot for um, in especially even if you're not gonna, going to release audio that's strictly for headphones because it does have more precise stereo imaging capabilities it does allow you I think to thin out very dense um, audio in a very pleasing way it it thins it out but it doesn't sound lame 
You, you know what I mean? When something is thinned out too far, it just sounds weak and not pleasant to listen to. This just sounds like it's in a room, and it sounds like you're placing the the image itself at you know some point in the room, in front of you, to the side, up above you, down below you, wherever it might be. Really great option. So there you have it, three panning options with Logic Pro 10. With these three options, you have so many possibilities for panning your mix and creating a really great sounding recording. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I've got ambient guitar related content coming every week. And as always, I'll see all of you on the next video.